All right guys, today we're gonna start a series. We're building this core box, which is for uh, the Atlas, uh, get my parts all oriented here, right? This is for the Atlas 10F. So this is a brand new compound slide castings we're gonna be making. Uh, if anybody has ever looked at very many used lathes, uh, the compound slide is always getting tore up. And on these ones here, you know, they're getting to be about 60 years old, so there's been probably a lot of mistakes happened over the years. Anyway, let's get in the shop and let's build this thing. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you uh, how I rip wood when I don't wanna use a table saw. Uh, this is my saw bench, and it's, uh, I don't know, just about even with my knee. And uh, kind of the way you would use it, put your board down here and you can kneel on it. It's a really comfortable height for that, so that's important. Anyway, uh, this is called a bird's mouth or sometimes maybe a ripping notch would be another name for it. And to complete this whole setup, here's my pride and joy. This is a Diston Acme 120. And this has got, uh, what's the number of teeth? Four and an eighth? Four and a half teeth per inch. Anyway, uh, in its day, this was a very, very expensive saw. This was probably made in the, uh, oh, before the depression, in the 20s, early 20s probably. And it went for, I think, I'll have to check the books, but uh, about $5 a dozen, so you can imagine that time that was a lot of money. Anyway, I drew a line on here. We're gonna use this to uh, attach the uh, two, two uh, halves lengthwise of our core box. So, the way you do this, put your line over the notch, that way you don't saw through your bench. And being this is a hand saw, this is started on the backstroke usually, especially with something as coarse as this. Got this thing here, this is called a thumb hole. So this is meant to be used this way. Right? Some people will try to stick their, I don't know how, but some people will try to hold that in all kinds of strange ways, but it's meant to be held this way. And that's just to give you a little bit extra oomph on the push here. Okay, so, you can only kneel on this board so long before you've got too much hanging out there. What you can do, hold the saw upside down. I don't even have a line here. I don't really care about this material. This just needs to go away. Well, it went split on me. Oh well, probably that knot. No big deal, it's all waste anyway. I'll figure out why that thing broke while I was ripping it a minute ago. There's a, there's a crack in the end of this board I hit and it just popped out of there. All right, so a nice little extra feature about this Got a little spot underneath here you can rest your other blades and this is a this is actually probably too fine for what i'm doing but it's a cross cut saw and we can start i think by getting rid of all this junk right there a whole bunch of trash knots oops it's a problem with those mechanical pencil blades not very strong it's easy to sharpen though uh, just for interest sake uh, this one I think it's a number 12 or a 112 distant. There's an etch on here, which I can't read in this light, but uh, it stamps, it's 11 teeth per inch on this here. So this one should cut real nice and smooth. So if you can see, I've got my knee on the board holding it down. And I take my foot and kind of hook it around the back side of my other knee. This makes for a really solid uh, way to hold this material down. So keep that in mind that you're, you're sawing wood. All right, we need some pieces, 10 inches long. That's the size that the core box is right now. 
it'll have to get cut down, but I want to attach all this before I cut it down. So we'll just make it the same size. This ain't super fussy if I was a little bit shorter long. Don't matter. Another thing too, I'm sure most people probably know this, but maybe not. You use your thumb to kind of steady the blade as you hold it in position, at least for the first few strokes. Make one more of those. Now I'm just gonna cheat. This don't have to be perfectly square. It's gonna, it's gonna be all sawn and plain down to fit. All right, just two of those pieces. That uh, rip saw sure don't make a very nice, uh, nice clean cut, does it? But that's all right. It's gonna get plain down to size. So, let's straighten up this cut in here, but. Okay, another way, another saw back so I can hit it, you can also sit down on the blade and hold it this way. You guys can see my hands kind of like this. And you can rip vertically. I'm out of practice, I think. And this is actually a very comfortable way to do this. And the nice thing, when you get to the end, you can saw all the way right on out. Hit that knot. It's starting to jam the wood up. There. Oh, well, that was my bad there. I let it kink and it twisted and it broke the grain. We had some short grain going on. Not having good luck with my rip sawing today. Okay, so here's our plan of attack. So our problem is we've got these two different shapes, but they need to be joined together. And you know, we don't want this thing to fall apart over time. We want this to last for a long time. Hopefully we're making a lot of these parts, right? So put this guy here, and then we can really what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this one to here this one here right up onto it and get them all lined up real good just glue that down with a uh, regular tie bond or something like that and by the way got an affiliate link down there if you guys need any um, probably my favorite glue for doing this kind of work and then uh, this one glue that guy on there and then we're gonna plane this where it's flush with this and it could even be chamfered back it doesn't really matter uh, the only thing that matters is that this plane across here pretty consistent. And then we'll do the same thing over here, like that. And when this is all glued together, this is going to be bomb proof. Alright, so we got our Durham's water putty here again, and uh, knock everything down. Uh, one of the things I want to do, uh, this is going to be on the inside of this core. Or the core box, and, I'm sorry, and it's just a rough saw on edge. It's very rough, so I want to fill that with some of this putty on uh, both of these and then smooth that up. Right. So, I've got a, I think this is from like uh, children's Tylenol. But it's nice because it's got a measure on there. The only problem is it's got like uh, little ribs in there. So I don't know how I'm going to like this, but let's give it a whirl. We're just going to mix it up until we get 
kind of consistency I want. And I want it to be fairly dry because I want this stuff to set pretty quick. I think this tool is double ended so I can scoop and stir. Whenever you use this stuff, if you want to use your container again, once you're done, if you just go in and wash it out right away, the stuff will rinse out with water. Really easy to clean up. So take a little bit of this here. And just rub it into all these pieces here in the end grain. And this makes a pretty decent filler. And once we're done, we'll sand it all up. Nice and silky smooth. push it in there, kind of squeegee it off, pretty much get most of it off there. When that dries, that'll be super easy to uh, sand it down. So now, let's work on uh, gluing all this stuff up. All right, make sure to check the affiliate link. I'll put a, put a link down in the description. If you buy some of this stuff from uh, my Amazon connection there, then I'll get a small percentage of that. So you'll be helping to support what I do here. So, we'll go on here. Well, again, my favorite way to glue two pieces of wood together, especially a small stuff like this, it's called a rub joint. You can see a little bit of glue starting to come out now. And once you've got most of the glue out, it's going to get to a point where it's going to just stick. That's just about it. See? It's like, ooh, probably pick this all up. See? It works really good. And that'll make a very strong bond once it sets. In an ideal situation, I probably should have started with a block of wood that was just you know, as large as I was going to make it. But this is just material that I had laying around the shop. You know? I didn't necessarily want to go all the way downtown just to go pick up a piece of wood, spend money that I probably don't really need to. Right? I mean, obviously, I have the materials available here. Put that on there. Check my self, make sure it's good and straight. Yeah, of course it ain't. I want no gaps in there because that's gonna make the box not close all the way. Alright. We're gonna glue the other half of this box the same way. I'm gonna let them sit like this for about 15 minutes for this glue to, you know, uh, you know it's open time, which is the time that you're allowed to be able to work on this stuff before it starts to grab. We want it to set in there really good. Then we'll glue this other piece around the back. Okay, so this is set up enough that we can work with it now. Uh, it's still not completely 100% cured. Uh, just if you ever do this, uh, be mindful that these pieces need to be all mirror image in there together. I don't know if you can hear it, but fireworks going off outside. We must have smuggled some into the state. All right, so let's glue this uh, little backer piece in here. All right, so we'll let this cure for a minute and then uh, we're gonna plane this down and get these things all fitting real good together. I plane the sides of this stuff down and cleaned it all up and I've squared uh, the bottom. I, I planed this nice and flat and it's squared to this side as well as this side because when I drill this hole I want it to go through pretty pretty square and uh, I did one other thing right here at this end and then also at the uh, the other end I put just a little bit of glue and I clamped it and I let it set for a while so that now it's one block. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about you know, losing my alignment while I'm doing the drilling. 
So the whole purpose for doing this drill, we're gonna drill all the way through to where it goes down into this other board a little bit, and then we can put dowels into there and we'll glue them into one side and that'll make the box so it can slip together and it'll register, you know, very well. And we'll also have to do that, you know, we've glued this together, so uh, we're gonna have to trim this anyway. So uh, hopefully when I cut it, it should break the glue joint and we'll be free again. Okay, let's drill us some holes here. By the way, I put this clamp here just in case this thing grabs and tries to spin, it'll you know, act as an anti-rotation. And this is a uh, DeWalt braid point bit, so it makes a really nice clean hole. Oh. Speaking of it grabbing. times it grabbed it and wanted to lift up with the, the quill. really wanted to clamp this, but I didn't have enough uh, clamping capacity here. All right, let's go measure this thing out. We'll saw it apart. And uh, we'll need to make up some boards to go over the ends and that'll define the, the uh, end of the course. All right, guys, if you enjoy these kind of videos, you like seeing machines being resurrected, pulled out of the scrap yard, uh, why don't you consider subscribing and uh, maybe even support my Patreon channel. Uh, it'll certainly help pay for all the little supplies and stuff that I need. It doesn't take much, you know, every little bit helps. See you guys around.